Good day, because I'm not sure what time today this is going to be, but good day and welcome back to Kelly's Kitchen on Big Oggy World. He's, no, he's glaring at me. I'm not, no, no, it's Kelly's Kitchen right now, it is. <laughs> today we are going to make a French apple tart, courtesy of Good Food Magazine's September issue. Which is the latest one which is out now, you can get it. We've had ours a bit earlier because we are subscribers, but you can get it. So we are gonna make a French apple tart, which potentially should look like that. With a bit of luck. But that's the thing. Yeah, we, we like to try recipes so you don't have to. So we're gonna try them on from magazines, etc. If they Absolutely. go wrong, we'll tell you. And what's not to love about an apple tart, let's be real. So, the recipe in the magazine gives you all the ingredients, which we will put in the description below. Um, but the first thing you'll see is there is a um, an ingredient list for pastry. Now, if you've got time and you want to do it, it's not a, a difficult recipe for pastry, but quite frankly, I can't be bothered. So, I thought a sheet of short crust pastry because this is a short crust recipe and I'm going to use that so that saves me a little bit of time. So these are the ingredients as I said they'll be in the description below and you need a loose bottom 23 inch flan tin for this one. 23 inch centimetres sorry That's 23, not 23 inches love 23 centimetres you know the difference between inches and centimetres well see no I was brought up on centimetres and a lot of people use inches and I'm not really very good at that so okay. this is 23 centimetres and um, top tip get a permanent marker and write on the bottom of your tin what size it is because they don't mark them you haven't That's, marked that one yet I have I've marked it, it says so why didn't you look at it and say what it was then because I've written 23 inches on it <laughs> Five. Oops. It's five. 23. It's I, five. I've always liked to say how um, many inches. Yeah, I'm not going to get involved in that one. Right. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll out my sheet of pastry, pop it into my uh, flan dish, and then I'm going to get a piece of um, baking parchment and wipe down with baking beans and bake it first. Bacon bacon beans. Beans, yeah. You know, you just sit that. You've seen them a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I'll do that and then I'll come back when the pastry is baked because you really don't need to see it in an oven baking for however long. Okay, so I'll see you in a bit. Okay, so there's my pastry in my tin with covered with grease proof and the bacon beans in. The recipe says to leave some pastry overhanging, which I've done. It's quite tricky with my tin because it's quite a sharp top tin, but I think that's for um, shrinkage purposes. So you're going to put that in the oven at 200 degrees fan for 15 minutes, and then you're going to take it back out, take out the grease proof and the beans, and then put it back in for another 10 to 15 minutes until it's nice and golden. Meanwhile, while your case is baking, set aside four of your apples. And then the rest of the apples you need to peel, core and chop roughly and put them into a shallow pan with two tablespoons of water, all but one tablespoon of the caster sugar and the brandy or calvados if you're using alcohol. You need to um, cover it and basically let it go on a low heat for about 25 to 30 minutes until it collapses into a puree. So I'm going to crack on and do the apple prep now. Okay, so the pastry's been in for 15 minutes now. I'm going to take it out, take out the baking beans and the baking parchment and put it back in for another 10 minutes or so until it sort of goes nice and golden. One thing, if you're using baking beans, don't ever try to pick them up or put them away straight out of the oven because they are so hot, you need, you'll need you burn yourself badly. So back in it goes, as you can see, it's starting to brown around the edges. 
the ideal of leaving the overhang is that when it's completely cooked you then um, cut it off with a serrated knife so it's nice and even all the way around but you do you back in it goes now we've also chopped up the apples and they are now in our saucepan with the sugar and some brandy and some uh, two tablespoons of water and we're going to start those going now until they're nice and soft and pulpy so i don't know if you want to do a close-up john you do i do love the close-up of stuff is going pulpy it's going to take a while to heat the pan up because this is a cast iron pan and um, it does say a shallow pan which is why we went for this one but they do take a little while to warm up Give it a stir, pop the lid I guess. Absolutely, once it starts to bubble I know it's there. Okay, so our apple puree is now done. Our tart tin is done. Excuse the bit of pastry. I've trimmed off around the edges. Bit of a faff. If you're not worried about shrinkage, just take it off at the beginning. So we are now going to put the apple puree into the bottom and then I'm going to peel, core and slice thinly four more apples to make concentric circles to make it pretty around the tart yeah okay it's so. a French apple tart so it's going to be a lot of faff it has been a faff because it's French not that I have a problem with the French but it'll be faffy one thing I will say is that um, you must use eaten apples for this not brownies so they recommend using either Cox's, Russets or Granny Smith's. We couldn't get any. We couldn't get Cox's. We, I've never seen Russets in our shop. Not in a supermarket. We, we do see them occasionally in like the farm shop. Something like um, that. So we plumped for Braeburns. Are they Braeburns? Yeah, Braeburns. Braeburns. When you look online, the Braeburns is close to a Cox's when you cook with them. I still think Cox's is better. So... Um, they're coming to season soon. They are so. coming into season yep. soon. So there's quite a lot of puree here. Well, I suppose you've got to make quite a bed for the apple. Absolutely. The apple slice Otherwise, you wouldn't have yeah. an apple tart, will you? You just have like an apple slice. slice. Yeah. So, and it goes. We did have brandy. We did have a little bit of brandy, but you can leave it out if you don't want. Obviously. Yeah, you don't have to use alcohol if you don't want to. If you you don't want to give it to your kids or whatever but obviously the alcohol burns off anyway burn off the alcohol. The depth of flavour really okay so that is already pretty filled up apple tart absolutely just get that last little bit in so you don't waste any I can always get a pork chop <laughs> there we go so I'm going to set that to one side and I, then I'm going to do my other apples. Once you've sliced your apples into sort of thinnish pieces, but not like really, not, really thin. Yeah, not wedges and not... Yeah, well, sort of just thin slices. Thin wedges. <laughs> when yeah, you put them slices. onto your tart, you are then going to brush the apple slices with the melted butter that you've got yeah. and sprinkle the last bit of sugar over the top. So um, I'll come back when I've sliced my apples and put them on the top. Okay, so once you've got your apple slices on and you have buttered them, then you add your final tablespoon of sugar, caster sugar over the top, like so. As you can see, I didn't measure mine. Ooh. Then it goes back into the oven at 190 fan to 10 centigrade for another 20 to 25 minutes and that's obviously going to cook the top of the apples so in we go oops problem with a loose bottom tin don't put your hand on the loose bottom no that's probably a good idea yeah otherwise the torque comes out in your hands Took me ages to get all those apples nice and actually neat in there. You're going to fire them up in the air then, weren't you? <laughs> there we go. 
So we'll be back in about 20 minutes because our, our oven is quite fierce at times. So what I would recommend is you get a thermometer, an in oven thermometer, because that's the only really specific way that you can test your oven's temperature. And I'm learning that mine, it has a hot spot and it, things need to be turned because of that hot spot and you can never really completely guarantee that the temperature that you think is in there is actually in there. So, I'll see you in 20 minutes. So our tart is cooked, um, as you can see, just a little bit of catching on the edges, which is lovely. The next thing, or the last thing you do then, is you take three tablespoons of apricot jam. This has got bits in it, but it really doesn't matter. Um, and then you mix it with about a tablespoon of boiling water from a freshly boiled kettle, just to loosen it all up a bit. And then while your tart is still really hot, you generously glaze it. So I would say just whack it on. Try and do it a bit gently so you don't move your apples around. But glaze to your heart's content. And we found that we didn't use quite as many apples as the recipe called for probably because we were using Braeburn and they are slightly bigger than um, Cox's but as you quite you, you probably know Granny Smith's are quite large so whatever apples you prefer you use so there we are French apple tart fresh and delicious enjoy please subscribe Please hit the notification bell buttons and come along and join us on our journey on Big Oggy World. See you all again soon. Bye for now.